Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. Jesus tonight. Amen, amen. He's wonderful. Amen. Brother Pat, if you would uh, just open us with a word of prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord God, that we're able to assemble here tonight under your wings, Lord Jesus. Lord, by faith, Lord, we came here tonight, Lord, believing, God, that you'll meet us, Lord, at your word, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for those that, that wanted to come that, that didn't come, Lord, and those, Lord, that may be on their way, Lord, for traveling mercy, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just open up our minds and our hearts, Lord Jesus leaving our ideas and thoughts aside, Lord Jesus. Just to hear from you, Lord God, is all of our desire, Lord Jesus. We need you more and more every day, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. I pray for those that aren't feeling well, Lord. May have fallen short of your glory, Lord. Just pick them up by faith, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus, that you're able, Lord, to accomplish all things in our life, Lord. Give us where we failed you, Lord Jesus, for our shortcomings, Lord Jesus. God, we just lay it all down at your feet, Lord, trusting and believing in you, Lord God. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for all things. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Amen, glory. He's wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me. He's my counselor.
Prince of Peace, mighty God is he, he is saving me, keeping me from all guilt and shame, wonderful is my Redeemer, I praise his name, oh yes, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Amen. Even when we don't feel him moving at all times, he's still wonderful. Amen. In the good times and in the bad times. Amen. He's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Glory to his name. Let's sing this song together. And actually, as we sing this song, Brother Byron, if you want to come, and we'll just take a little offering up tonight. Amen. God is good, good, good. God is good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. Brother Brian, you can lead us in that prayer. Tonight. Amen. 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 
Amen. We're happy to be in the house of the Lord. We hope that you've had a good week. Amen. Those who may be watching in, may the joy of the Lord be your strength tonight. Amen. And we're happy to be here. Amen. Where we can come together. Amen. For Bible study and to discuss the word of God. Amen. Uh, we don't want to uh, keep us too long, so we're going to have the minister prepare to come at this time. Uh, but if you have any need from the Lord, he'll, he'll certainly reach down to it tonight. Amen. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. Amen. Let's sing this song together, Amazing Grace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'll get to work here. Praise the Lord. I, I've missed having uh, Joseph and Rebecca here. They're such an integral part of the ministry. I know they don't always feel the appreciation, but I really do appreciate them and, and been praying of ways to be a blessing to them. Those of you is so good and we're thankful to be out in the house of the Lord tonight. I know everyone's not here, but there's enough of us here to have church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I rushed here. I got off work. I, I won't even go through it. I've shared it with the deacon brother already. And, and uh, But I'm glad to be here, be in prayer for Sister Pam. She's home taking care of a few important things. She needs to be there for that. But her heart is here. She always tunes into the service, so uh, we have an audience that's not visible, but they're with us. But praise the Lord. I am just so thankful for what God is doing here and what he's shown in vision, what he's getting ready to do. I'm so glad I can see it. Amen. And thank God we'll all be a part of it if we're having expectation, true believers, um, of the word of God. In Psalms 107, verse 20, I want to read this because I said this on Sunday and I'm not preaching. I'm going to call Brother Pat up here in a moment. I just want to go over this because on Sunday, I said uh, God sends his word to heal us and 
it's a revelation in it. You have to, and it has to be preached on for you to really get the full effects of it. Uh, he doesn't send us a voice, he sends us his word. And by voice, I mean you have to send an actual person to speak his voice. And they come to get the word to you. But it's the word that God is sending to heal you, not the person, because the person can't heal you. He's just a preacher or, or a messenger of God that brings you the word, and it is the word that can heal. So Psalm 107 says, he sent forth his word and healed them, and he rescued them or delivered them from the grave. It depends on the version that you're reading. And so th th I just wanted to read that, God bless you, because I said that on Sunday and I wanted to get the scripture. I thought it was Psalm 109, so I'm glad I waited till tonight. And so God is sending a word. Wherever the healing is needed, he sends a word. And our entire body, not just our ears, but our entire body, amen, responds to the word of God. So when you're sick, and God began to show me this, that people have to be taught how to receive their healing and how to receive from God. And, and we're not going to do that tonight, but I just want you to know that God has a word for everything we can experience in this life. He has a word for it. And when that word is spoken, it's not just something you hear in your ear. It goes to where the affliction is. If, you, if your arm is withered and you need it to be healed, he has a word. That word goes to the arm. It don't go into your ear. It's not intended for the ear. It's intended for the ailment. See? And, and so once we understand that and learn how to operate our faith, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Man, man, man. So uh, I just want to share that. And, and again, we're, we're thankful we had Brother... Uh, Elias was here. He spoke a word for the, for the young adults and things on Sunday. We appreciate him. And there's so many more uh, ministers lined up to be here with us. And I want to have a meeting with the church. We want to get a flyer out before other preachers start to having their meetings and things. Um, and then you can't have it because people don't know where to go. There's too many meetings going on, so it'll be hard to get a crowd. So we, we're praying about going ahead and push through it. Uh, I was waiting to get a confirmation of the budget and also some ministers we have lined up. But, but our faith is beyond just waiting. We can trust the Lord. And, and uh, even if I had to have a girl to Joe preach all of them, we'll have a minister to preach. <laughs> Amen. God will provide a preacher for the meetings. And uh, But we have some lined up. I'm just waiting on confirmations from them. So uh, I'm going to ask Brother Pat to come up here and just, uh, I just wanted to come up. I told him I'd throw on some clothes and rush over here. <laughs> I, just wanted to, I wanted to be here. I told him I'd get up at 1.30, Brother Pat. Got to go to work. So, uh, But we want to just trust the Lord tonight. We'll, we'll hear from God and hear from heaven. So let's just welcome our brother as he get ready to come. Uh, amazing grace. I had journeyed in the long dark night out on the sea by faith alone sight unknown and yet his eyes were watching me the anchor holds though the ship is battered the anchor
knees as I face the raging sea. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. I've had visions and I've had Southeast Asia readiness battalion and uh, I was on a helicopter carrier and let me tell you I I when I hear that song I can relate to it because we went on the outskirts of a typhoon one time and uh, it was something but anyways let's pray let's ask the Lord to have his way dear gracious heavenly father we bow our hearts lord god and we ask god that you would move our thoughts and our ideas out of the way lord that we have the mind of christ lord jesus lord we thank you for that lord and if i should say anything out of the way lord forgive me lord i don't i mean it intentionally lord it's just that i, I get a little nervous at times lord but god i know by faith you have me in your hands lord jesus so, Lord, we thank you and we love you, Lord Jesus. I just pray, God, you'd have your perfect way now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. There's a, a opening of scripture here. Uh, Colossians 1, 23. Let's turn to it here. Colossians 1 23 I'd like to read from if we continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which we have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under the heavens which I Paul and made a minister. 
who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and, and fill up that which is behind of the, the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body sake which is the church you know I just want to thank the Lord that, that God had taken and brought a uh, prophet in this age because I was you know it's funny I did have chickens for a while you know and I felt I'm an eagle what am I doing here with chickens you know? <laughs> but you know I it was just a hobby it was something I enjoyed doing uh, you know uh, God had brought me out of that denominational church and I wasn't really brought out, I was kind of kicked out. They'd give me an ultimatum, but anyways, you know, part of my testimony. But you know, I, I, I had to give up a lot. That's when, actually, when I came into the message, my first wife turned against me, you know. She thought, well, I've really lost my mind now. <laughs> but that was all right, you know, because God was in control. I just had to have faith, you know. I had to have that faith that, that doesn't storms you know, or the raging sea, you know. I just have to fast my eyes upon that faith and look forward, not looking to the right or left or behind me. And she's going on in Jesus Christ because I know he said he'll never leave me or forsake me. And so I'm just standing on that promise. But again, I thank God for Eleazar that went out and got his bride. You know, I, I just on top of everything else, it just uh, at, at the right timing, you know, because I used to think, well, why didn't I ever come to the Lord sooner? But it was not my timing, it's his timing. Amen. You know, if it would have been a lot easier in life if I'd have came to him sooner. But the Lord allowed me to go through those times and periods so maybe I could reach out and relate to someone else and go to them where they're at, you know, because that's what the prophet taught us to do. You know, we got to go to where they're at. You know, we can't just critic criticize them and say oh look you know look at this and, and I was guilty of that you know I'd, I'd look at the earrings and everything else you know and I'd say well hell's so full it's come up here on earth now you know and that's what we're seeing but you know God still loves her soul you know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and we know that there's there's predestination there's chosen ones and so you know we just have to love them because they don't know any better. You know, they're just, they're groping around in darkness in this world, you know. I'm going to read a, a, a little bit here from the prophet. Let's hope I can get it all across here the way I, I, I and, and it's uh, uh, Melchizedek, the great prince and king, starting at, uh, at let's see, 90. 91, 90. The anchor of our soul that went into the veil, beyond the veil, and anchored. And we know that veil was torn in half. <laughs> and, okay, and you know a ship sometimes, servicemen and so forth, know it that you have to have been on the sea when really the waves get dashing too hard and for the boat and the anchor and they anchor it and it's got to line the line let down and that holds it and and it may flip around this way and that way and and but but that anchor holds it it's the anchor that cannot see land anywhere but they drop the anchor beyond the veil, which is the water. And that anchor goes down into the bottom of the sea, the top of some big mountain somewhere, and drags it and, and catches it on that mountain. And it holds into the crevice there, and all the sea can move in and, and more. And the anchor is out of sight. And I, I made a note here, I said, no devil, <laughs> no devil out of hell can shake it. No devil out of hell can shake it. You know, you just, I, I got a saying, you know, 
you take your big white magic marker and just write, you lose, and remind that devil, you lose, and just walk on his head by faith. Amen. Just keep marching. Amen. Don't pay attention to what's coming at you, these arrows and stuff, you know. Just deflect them, you know, in the name of Jesus, Amen. by the power of God that he's given us. And it ain't, it, it, we're coming to a place where, you know, we're going to have to start speaking bullets, you know. Bullets of love and bullets of safety, and you know, <laughs> what can I say? Praise God, hallelujah, anyways. And every, every uh, person that's ever received Jesus Christ's personal Savior been born again of the Holy Spirit, and you've dropped your anchor right there. See, that's what he's saying. When you receive him, you dropped an anchor. You know, the storms may come and go, but you drop that anchor, Hallelujah. and that anchor's digging in. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and if you're sick and you hope is, is built on Christ, you've dropped an anchor. The doctor may say this or that or another, but you sure, sure as your faith looks yonder. See, my faith ain't looking at that situation I'm in. Even though all these elements, you know, the, the five outer elements and the, and the spirit elements are telling me something different. But, you know, you can turn that around for God's glory. You know, you can use those elements in a positive way. Okay, the waves, the six spells, and many rises, every, everything like that. But your anchor holds within the veil. And somewhere out yonder in the mystic land says that you have got your hopes built on. The doctor said that it's, it's gone. And the medicine says that it, it can't do nothing. And the surgeon has failed. But my hope is not built on that. You know, I mean, sometimes that'll shake you, you know, but you got to get a hold of yourself and shake yourself out of it, you know, and stand on that faith. We have our hope within the veil. What veil? Through the, sh the shedding of the blood that, that tore his spirit from his body. And in between that veil, there's an anchor has caught a hold of something. Hallelujah. It sure has. I hope you see it. Oh, my. And when I can see the preview of it, it makes me rejoice seeing that our anchor holds within the veil the bible said he is our overcome over he that overcometh will i give a white stone and a new name that no one knows but himself don't make any difference what people say and it don't make any uh, join the church because you did this or that but something just tells you that you got a stone that's in the heart and a hard stone, a soft one. That's right. This stone makes your heart soft Amen. instead of hard. And praise the Lord. And that's what, what I needed, you know, because my earlier life made me hard. And, you know, you can all relate to things that you've gone through. But God is good, and God is great, for sure. I'm going to read another little bit here and try to build on this faith. And I, I've always said, you know, that faith, there's, I'm only going to cover one, one subject of it tonight, that faith holds on. Faith holds on to the Word of God, because I believe it's somewhere, uh, Brother Branham said that faith does three things. It says, he says it holds on to the Word of God. Faith acts upon the Word of God. And how does it act? It says, uh, the doctor says, well, you got cancer. Well, your faith should go to the Word and says, no, I'm healed by his stripes. Amen. Isaiah 53, you know, or in Luke, and, and all the healing, healing scriptures. Because it's our, it's our anchor, you know. And we have that, that, that right and we have that authority and a power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to cast off devils and spirits of whatever. Doesn't matter. 
but uh, I want to read here. So the faith, the faith does three things. It holds on to the word of God. It acts upon the word of God. And then faith does not reason with the word of God. I'm just going to cover the, the, the uh, faith that holds on tonight. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit here from uh, As the Eagle Stirs the Nest. As the eagle rises higher and higher, the little eaglets do not murmur a bit. They have their little beaks set in her feathers, her feathers of faith. <laughs> they just can't murmur, and that's the way God takes his church. If you're really set in the word, you don't murmur, you just hold on as the little eagles held on. If, if God made the promise, he can keep his promise. And those who are set in the word hold on. So that's what we're doing. As you know, I, I tell you, I look at that pyramid, you know, and actually we're all little pyramids and we're built into that big pyramid. But it, it's, it's steep and there's a lot slipping off today, you know. They're all falling by the wayside. But, you know, if they belong to God, I pity. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes, you know. I wouldn't want to have to go through the... I wouldn't want to go through the ringer, you know, <laughs> the press, you know. You know those old washing machines, you know, they used to have with the rollers where you'd have to put the, well, see, that's what they're going to go through, whether they realize it or not, you know. You know, so if, if they had any wisdom in them of God, they would do an about face, you know, and get their feet planted in the right direction. Okay. And his promise and those who are set in the word. As the mother eagle watches over her, her own, so Christ watches over us. Amen. He is sitting on the right hand of God, the majesty, sitting on the right hand of majesty, on high. And it makes no difference what the world says or what people think. Just have a wonderful time and rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And if you do not think that God has things for you that you never knew about. Just come right, come and take a ride, he says. And that's on the wings of an eagle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Yes, Amen. So faith holds on. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, James 5.13. Here in a minute. I to line these up, you know. I just hope I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'll say, Brother Brand said he was just a spare tire, and that's how I am as a spare tire, and, and I'm a retread too. I mean, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so, anyways, praise the Lord. So let's let's go here. James five thirteen. Okay, and it says here, it says, prayer and confession. Uh, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. 15. And the prayer of the faith prayer of the faith. There's our faith kicking in. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. Amen. Prayer of faith. Can't live without it. Shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sin they shall be forgiven him. You know and I was uh, having my little devotion this morning. Uh, Brother Branham talked about the, uh, the woman that came in and uh, ill fame woman and it was at Simon Peter's house, Simon's house and uh, she went in there and that faith that she had even in her condition you know it took a lot of faith and a lot of courage to go do what she did and she 
wiped his feet with her hair and her tears. And that, that was an act of faith, you know, because, you know, and, and, and she didn't care. She, she didn't care what they were thinking, what anyone thought or anything. She just knew she had to get to Jesus, you know, and that was her faith in action, you know. So uh, that's all we have to do is we just have to get that, that mustard seed of faith can, can do a lot. It can, it can move mountains and so on. But God's so good. He loved us so much that he shed his own blood. Acts 20, 28 says that God shed his own blood. So God is so good. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, he that's, that's in you, which has got to be our faith. That's, that's him in us. Jesus Christ. Uh, great was was he in Elijah than death itself. And great is he that was in Elijah than the grave. Because he escaped the grave. He escaped death. And he just went up home in the chariot. See, greater was he and he was in Elijah. Elijah had that faith where he rode up in the heavens. And you say, oh, well, that was a great man. Wait a minute. The Bible said he was a man that had like passion, like you and I. That's right. But when he prayed, he believed. He got what he prayed for. And that's his faith exercising right there. And that's the way we have to pray. We have to stay so positive. But we live in such a negative world. I mean, we're bombarded by negativity. But you know, God is his faith. And, and our anchor, our anchor holds in his word. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Nothing. Nothing in this world. You know, they, they think they've got an atomic bomb and some weapons. Wait until the bride Lord, <laughs> flexes her muscles of faith. You know, Brother Bram says his faith is like a big chest with hair on it sticks out. I mean, it, it don't take, it don't take uh, no guff. <laughs> faith does. But, you know, it's, it's seasoned in love. I always used to tell my kids, you know, discipline seasoned in love. And I said, that's what you're getting. It's because I love you, not because I want to be mean and ugly. You know, love is corrective. It's, wait a minute. It says, uh, he was like a man who prayed for place. And he prayed for Jesus said, said to us, when you pray, believe that you receive what you ask for. It shall be done. He prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain for three years and six months. Ooh, something there, huh? See, great was he that was in Elijah, that, that nature. And then it says, uh, uh, paragraph eight, 182, then what about healing the sick? See, greater is he that is in you than the sickness, see? because that's the interpretation interpreting the very law of God sickness is well the greater is he that's in you than than the healer and creator than that than than the that uh, the devil the devil that's interpreted the very program of your life. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Glory to God. Blessed be his name. The anchor holds. Let's see. Glory be to God. Time is it anyway. So, got a little time. I'm going to just tell a little story here. I used to tell the kids and boys. You know, it's about an eagle, you know, uh, and I, I believe 
let's say, let's say it was a young eagle. And this eagle is just flying around, just having a good day, you know, and everything, and he's a little hungry. And he sees this chunk of ice floating down the river, and there's a rabbit on that chunk of ice. And he goes, oh, there's dinner. So he swoops down, and he lands on that block of ice, and he begins to devour that rabbit. And he's just having a good time going along in life, you know, just going with the flow. I always say, you know, if you're going with the flow, well, any carp or sucker, sucker can go with the flow, but it takes a rainbow trout to swim upstream, <laughs> you know. And so this eagle's on this chunk of ice, and little did he know his talons got frozen into that block of ice or that floating ice with a rabbit, cause, and he could hear the, the roar of the fall up ahead. And he thought, well, I'll just sit here and, you know, devour this and have a good old time. And little did he know, he went over the fall and plunged to his death. So, you know, we as Christians, you know, we put things off and we just want to put things behind us and not take care of it. And I'm just as guilty as anyone in here, you know. But, you know, we don't want to wait too long to act upon God's word by faith, you know. And uh, that's all I wanna, wanted to bring that out a little bit. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 16 and 17. And we have known and believe the love of God has to us. God is love, and he, he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is so we are so so are we in his word praise the lord i just uh want to just reflect on the lord a little bit i have another scripture here but i'm kind of finishing up pretty quick here uh I'm a spare tire with low air. <laughs> you know, let's go to, uh, I want to make this my final scripture we read. And I, I, I've read it out of the NIV, and I liked it better. So let me, uh, yeah, it's Psalms 66, 9. I'm going to read from this, uh, I think it's the NIV. There's no doubt about it. God holds our lives safely in his hands. He's the one who keeps us faithfully following him. So it's, it's not us. It's nothing that we can do about it. It's our faith, him holding us in his hands, just believing his word and walking in his word and not accepting anything less than his word. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we know that his time, the one in the world, his time is just about up. And he's fighting mad right now. You see the world is shaking. It's in a topsy-turvy. But, you know, we have a faith and an anchor that holds. So we don't have to look at the news. We don't have to get up, you know, excited about the moon. We know what the moon was about, turning to darkness, you know. It's, it's, the, it's the world. The light has gone out of the world. I mean, they, they're rejecting, they rejected the prophet. Actually, what was it, 1956 or 58, that uh, he, he, had a, he preached indictment. He indicted this United States. And, you know, and from there on out, it went all the way downhill because I, I was listening to Brother Branham, 
and he was talking about how the, you know, back in, that was 64, they would take God off the coins and God out of the schools. And see, now I've seen a movement where they're trying to put God back in the schools. I forgot what it was called, the spirit of something. And it's a program, it's like a Bible club. You know, because I mean, they have every other kind of club, so why couldn't we have a Bible club? And when I was in the air conditioning refrigeration school down there in Pinellas Park, that's what I did. I started a little Bible study, a Bible club, <laughs> you know. I caught a little flack, but that's all right, you know, because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. By faith, I walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. I hope you love him. I love him because he first loved me. Thank the Lord Jesus. Well, brother, I'm going to chop it off there. And uh, thank the Lord. You give me a little time up here. Uh, the spooks are going away a little bit more. You know, the more I get up here, the more I get more relaxed. But glory be to God. Well, glory. Hallelujah. That was free. God bless you.